Welcome into Outkick the Show, boys and girls. I hope you're having fantastic Mondays wherever across this great nation or this great world you may find yourself. My name is Clay Travis. This is a little something we call Outkick the Show. I sit down and talk about you. 30 minutes unfiltered, the biggest issues of the world today. And we have got a ton of different topics to go to. I'm a little bit early today. Because your boy is continuing to dominate all of New York media. The New Yorker has got a book review out for Republicans by Sneakers today. And I've got to provide an article for the New York Post that will run uh, surrounding the release of my book as well. So, so many things to get to. Lots of NFL and college football stories. And you know the best place to go make sure you're getting the best line? It's presenting sponsor of this show. They're called sportsbookreview.com. They have all of the lines from all over the internet, all over uh, Vegas, everywhere you could want to go to get numbers that make sense to make sure that you're getting the best dollar value for your bet. Sportsbookreview.com. Get hooked up there. Um, Also, my guy Ryan Kelly, I'm giving you a free VIP. Our picks, hashtag respect the picks, are hitting at 58%. And that's even with Two incredibly bad beats down the stretch last night, or Saturday night. LSU, I mean, sorry, Alabama and Ole Miss not hitting the over, and I'm going to talk about this. Criminal. Criminal that that number did not hit. And also, also, Mizzou not covering, also criminal. Much discussion coming from that, but even with that, we're still at 58%. You can go to OutKick, you get a free autographed copy of the book with your VIP subscription. Uh, You get an automatic VIP phone line. Give it as a gift. It'll be awesome. But my guy, Ryan Kelly, if you get a refi or you get a new mortgage or you buy a new home and you use the Home Loan Expert, you mentioned Clay Travis and OutKick. You get a free VIP. You get a free autographed copy of my book. All right? So you've been thinking about doing it. You want to wipe out all your credit card debt. Maybe you want to wipe out all your student loan debt. You've been thinking about doing it. Well, you get an autographed copy of your book, of my book, in exchange. Just tell them Clay sent you thehomeloanexpert.com. We got a lot to get to there. Uh, Here is our rundown of stories. Fitzmagic, baby. Mahomes mania. Titans out coach the Texans. LSU, I'm going to issue a personal apology to Coach O and the entire LSU fan base. SEC power rankings. We got Brett Kavanaugh under siege for a high school party incident. Uh, I'll break it down a little bit. I may have to do a whole show tomorrow on this Brett Kavanaugh story. I find it utterly fascinating. Outkick Top 10, SEC Power Rankings, and the Big Ten Stunk. But again, off the top, go to sportsbookreview.com for all the best numbers. And go check out my guy Ryan Kelly at The Home Loan Expert to wipe out all your credit card debt, maybe even your student loan debt, get a brand new mortgage, take advantage of making the smart financial decision in the fall just in time. All right, here we go. Let's dive right in here. I am in love with Ryan Fitzpatrick and everything this guy has come to represent. Fitzpatrick has gone out and stolen away the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from Jameis Winston, who can't even visit the team while they're out there rolling up points and rolling up scores, the likes of which we've never seen before. This is an incredible display from Ryan Fitzpatrick. Right now, if you had to say through two weeks... Who is the NFC MVP and who is the AFC MVP? Ryan Fitzpatrick is the NFC MVP and Patrick Mahomes is the AFC MVP. What odds could you have gotten on those guys being the most impressive players so far in the NFL season? I love everything about it. Ryan Fitzpatrick's mantra, like sexy Rex Grossman back in the day, go deep, baby. Does Sean Jackson and Mike Evans streaking down the field. If I were a Bucks fan, I'd be ecstatic. And if they tried to replace Ryan Fitzpatrick, I might protest, and I never protest anything. I might show up outside the facility, lock arms, and refuse to leave until Fitzmagic is allowed to finish this season. He's having an epic run. Reminds me a little bit. I know it's early. Reminds me a little bit of the one great season Brad Johnson have had when he won the Bucks the Super Bowl. You guys remember that? Like 03, 04-ish? I got to tell you, it was a phenomenal performance, okay? Here's the other thing that's standing out about Patrick Mahomes. I don't know how you cover a guy with a rocket cannon laser of an arm like Patrick Mahomes has right now. If you can't get pressure on him, 
Travis Kelsey, my thesis here, I think Travis Kelsey is open on every single play. Like, I don't, if you have a good enough quarterback, I think that Travis Kelsey is open on every single play, okay? And so when he's hitting Travis Kelsey on these seam routes, the ball is like a laser, and I don't think the defensive backs even have time to react to it. It's phenomenal. It's a lot of fun to watch. There is much discussion surrounding these two guys. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, how about showing up in Deshaun Jackson's outfit? How about the double chains, the chest hair, the jacket? That's an incredible look. That is just flat out unbelievable. That's This locker room loves me, and I'm going to go roll out. When you know that you are making one big play after another, that's how you perform. I love everything about this Ryan Fitzpatrick and Patrick Mahomes NFL renaissance. Okay, I was at the game. He looked just like Conor McGregor. In fact, when I saw the pictures first go up on social media, I thought it was Conor McGregor, and I was like, why in the world is Conor McGregor out and doing a media press conference right now? I had no idea. Okay, a couple of things here that I think also are out here that deserve a lot of attention. The Titans. If I am a Texans fan, Bill O'Brien got out-schemed and out-coached, the likes of which I have not seen in a very, very, very long time. If you're a Texans fan and you watch that game, I was there in person watching it, the end of the game scenario summed up this game overall. The Titans score on a punt, right? Punt return fake. They put Derrick Henry in the Wildcat. They ran an entirely high school offense and they managed to beat the uh, they managed to beat the Texans, who were drastically better than them. I don't think the Titans covered Will Fuller or DeAndre Hopkins the entire game. In fact, some of the throws that Deshaun Watson had to make, I don't remember the last time I saw wide receivers that open. Now, to Deshaun Watson's credit, he made an incredible throw for their touchdown catch. But otherwise, these guys were wide open. I don't think anybody can cover DeAndre Hopkins. I don't think anybody can really cover Will Fuller if he stays healthy. Will Fuller sometimes can't catch the ball. They were wide open the whole game. To start 0-2 and lose to this Titans team is really hard to justify given the fact the Titans didn't have their top three tackles. They didn't have top three. That's crazy. They promoted a guy from practice squad to play a starting tackle role in the NFL. They also did not have Marcus Mariota. They completed passes with Derrick Henry, with, uh, with uh, what's his name, the safety uh, who's back there, whose name I forgot on the radio show this morning. So I've got too much media that I'm doing. Uh, I can't remember every single player's name from every single t- single team. De- Kevin Byard. Yes, Byard made an incredible throw. It was phenomenal. Okay, That's the most impressed I've been by Titans coaching in a very, very long time. All right, I mean, it was absolutely extraordinary. Um, all right, so those things jump out at the NFL. Congratulations to Blake Bortles. If, the, if he plays like that the rest of the season, or even close to that, the Jags are going to win the AFC and they will play against either the Packers, the Vikings, or the Rams in the NFC in the Super Bowl. I, if, if Blake Bortles plays like that, the Jags are going to win the AFC. Period. No doubt. Zero doubt at all. Okay? Um, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. A lot of people say, Clay, you never admit when you're wrong. Clay, you never, ever admit when you're wrong. I want everybody to look at me. I even wore my LSU colored shirt today. I want everybody to look at me right now. Every LSU fan. I was wrong about Coach O at LSU. Coach O has dunked on me and just hung on the rim all balls in the face style for a couple of years in a row and I have consistently expected him to not be able to do so. I have stood in the lane, in the restricted circle, thinking there's no way Coach O can get up high enough to dunk on me. There's no way he can climb this high into the sky. And over and over again, go Tigers, he has just dunked right on me. And I keep expecting, you know what? Coach O's not going to dunk on me again. And every time he dunks on me. And it happened again against Auburn. He dunked on me. He dunked on me against Miami. If we just took out LSU games from the picks, I'd be like 65% this year. I'm not, well, I'm betting against them this week. I think it's going to be a letdown game. But I got to tell you, my fearless prediction when the season started, Coach O going to go 6-6 and and get fired. I think it's more likely LSU wins the national championship now 
than it is that Coach O gets fired. I don't think either is very likely, but I think it could certainly happen. All right? So uh, when my SEC power rankings, I got to tell you, my SEC power rankings, right now, there are some bad teams in the SEC. By the way, Arkansas fans always think that I pick on their team. Arkansas, I didn't even tweet about how bad you guys were. You got beat 44-17 to at home by North Texas. You should not be able to stay in the SEC. You should get relegated if you get beat 44-17 to by North Texas at home. You're, and I'm not even kidding about that. Arkansas should have to play their way back into the SEC. We should promote Arkansas State. Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, should get on the phone. He should be like, look, I know Arkansas has got a big program. I know you guys make a lot of money. But you guys just embarrassed the conference and got beat 44-17 by North Texas at home. So next season, we're going to bring in Arkansas State and you guys have to go play in the Sun Belt and win your way back into the SEC. If you can't do it, then you're never going to get to stay in the SEC again. I think that's totally fair when you have a beating that bad. It would be how much more fun, by the way, how much this would be amazing. How much more fun would it be if you lose by three touchdowns or more to a FCS or a non-Power 5 conference team at home if you immediately got kicked out of that Power Conference. Tell me how much more you would watch if every time one of these small schools came in, if your program was risking getting relegated if they didn't get it close. And imagine how many more people would have been watching that Arkansas-North Texas game when North Texas got up. Oh, it would be amazing. And you would have to still schedule the games. Or you wouldn't schedule the games and it would get better. That would be, I'd be like, everybody would be immediately tuned into their, their television. Can you imagine the SEC fan reaction if a coach like got beat like that by North Texas and got relegated? It would be amazing. All right, here's my power rankings. Number one overall, Alabama. Number two overall, Georgia. Three, LSU. Four, Ohio State. Five, Oklahoma. Six, Auburn. Oh, that's my top ten. That's my outkick top 10. I'll go ahead and finish that. Six, Auburn. It just looks so similar to my SEC top. Uh, seven, Washington. Eight, Stanford. Nine, Oklahoma State. Ten, Notre Dame. Here's my SEC power rankings. Number one, Alabama. Number two, Georgia. Three, LSU. Four, Auburn. Five, Mississippi State. Six, Kentucky. Seven, Texas A&M. Eight, Vanderbilt. Nine, Missouri. Ten, South Carolina. Eleven, Tennessee. Twelve, Florida. 13 Ole Miss and 14 Arkansas, you should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, okay, um, my apology again to LSU. I want to make it clear. LSU, I was wrong. LSU fans, I apologize to all of you. Coach O, I sincerely apologize and extend my uh, deepest regrets for my stupidity as it pertains to your ability to coach the Tigers and lead the Bayou Bengals to excellence. All right? That's as honest and fair as I can be. Uh, amazing stuff. Alabama has now outscored Ole Miss 128-10 to 10 in the past two years. I've never seen anything like it. I'm telling you right now that this is one of the biggest beatings I have ever seen and I think Alabama might be the best team I've ever seen in my lifetime. I, and, and I hate to exaggerate, but I think they're up there with the dominant SC teams that would just run people off the field. I'm not sure how many people can actually stay within 30. This is an amazing stat for you with Tua. And I've been saying that Tua is an Alabama cheat code. So I want to read this to you so I don't mess it up. This is Tua Tagovailoa. These stats are going to blow your mind. You're going to see them and you're going to be like, I can't believe... This is actually real. Um, Tua on third down. This is Tua Tiger by Low. It's one of the most remarkable stats I have ever seen. This season on third down, Tua is 12 for 12 passing for 298 yards and six touchdowns and has carried three times. Okay, so think about that for a minute. I don't, this is an Alabama official tweet. Tua on third down is 12 for 12 passing for 298 yards and six touchdowns. That's like, that's not even video game possible. This is one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. And I hate this guy. I'm going to block this guy. If I see you make a cliche argument that's so stupid, it makes my head hurt. You know, Alabama, I ain't played anybody, right? 
You know Alabama ain't played anybody, right? If you ever find yourself saying a college football team has not played anybody, they play the motherfucking teams on their schedule. All right? This is the most tiring and boring situation and argument ever. Okay? Alabama, it doesn't matter who Alabama's beating. Never in the history of the SEC has any team started by beating teams by scoring 50 or more in three straight games. I don't care who you're playing. Alabama beat Louisville. Louisville has not lost to anybody else. Alabama beat Arkansas State. Arkansas State has not lost to anybody else. Alabama beat Ole Miss. Ole Miss has not lost to anybody else. Alabama dunked on everybody on their schedule worse than I've ever seen a team beat three players in the FBS level ever before. Okay? So get out of here with your stupid, they haven't played anybody yet. If you win by 50 in every game, I don't care who you're playing. That's impressive. 51-14, 57-7, 62-7, I believe are the Alabama scores off the top of my head. You don't have to be a genius to look at Alabama and say, you know what, that team's really good at football. You know how sometimes you don't even need to know the sport and you can be like, I think this guy's pretty good. Like, I'm not an expert in swimming, but when Michael Phelps jumps into the water and starts swimming, I think to myself, you know what, this guy's pretty good at swimming. That's really fast. This guy can really go fast, all right? If that is happening, then the truth of the matter is this. I'm having to block a bunch of people, having to murder, serial killing. Is there something falling apart here where everybody can only see one letter? Because I just murdered a bunch of people all in cold blood. And I love this on every level that these guys got in and they're like, we're all going to use the letter F in Clay Travis's show. And then boom, they're all dead immediately. Imagine to yourself, oh, how pathetic you would have to be to make that decision and then to try this man's gun. To try the trigger finger on this man and just all get murdered in cold blood like that. It was like the OK Corral meets Outkick. Don't step to me and even try it. It's a good analogy. I'm like that tiger in India. I just show up and kill everybody until I get killed by that guy hunting me on the on the uh, elephant. Um, all right, that's what you call a quick draw. All right, I am your Huckleberry, boys and girls. Uh, all right, a couple of other things that I want to hit here uh, as well. Um, the Big Ten. The Big Ten, this is unbelievable, all right? When I look at the Big Ten, uh, this is phenomenal, unless you're a Big Ten fan, in which case you may want to cry yourself into sleep. The Big Ten, think about this for a minute. How bad was the Big Ten? I'm pulling up the data because I don't want to mess it up. Kansas beat the Rutgers, beat the Rutgers. Imagine if Rutgers tried to call themselves the Rutgers. Uh, that Kansas beat Rutgers by 41. I was earlier saying that Arkansas should get relegated out of the SEC. If you beat Rutgers by 41 and you are Kansas, Rutgers should not even get to play in the Big Ten. They should have to stop playing football. Those should be the rules. If Kansas is capable of beating you by 41, you should no longer be able to field a football team. All right, so Rutgers, this is going to go down as one of the all-time worst decisions by any conference commissioner ever to add Rutgers into the Big Ten. Northwestern lost at home to Akron, which had not beaten a Big Ten team since 1894. Nebraska lost at home to Troy. Wisconsin lost at home to BYU. Maryland lost at home to Temple. Purdue lost at home to Mizzou. And Illinois lost at home to South Florida. Seven teams lost non-conference games in the same day. I've got my guy Old Takes Exposed writing an article about it. But i got to tell you this right now. Every single person who argued that the Big Ten had passed the SEC should have to do up-downs with Coach O on the, uh, on the whistle until all of them either pass out or throw up. Every single media member who said that the Big Ten had passed the SEC should have to travel to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They should have to go outside into that 100 degree heat muggy, middle-of-the-afternoon sunshine. Coach O should get to stand there with a whistle. And every time he blows the whistle, the member of the media should have to drop to the ground, 
and get back up. And you have to keep going until you pass out, throw up, or die if you want to keep your job. I would watch that television show in an instant. When you are fundamentally wrong like that and you share your fundamental wrongness with everybody, I like the idea of media members having to do up-down live on television until they pass out, throw up, or die. That's fair. That's 100% fair. It would be amazing. It would be fantastic television. And my guy, Old Takes Exposed, is actually looking up everybody who made that decision. We could also transfer it around. Maybe Nick Saban gets to do it sometimes. Uh, whoever the coach is, that would be amazing. All right, we had two really bad beats. Two really bad beats. First of all, if you are an Ole Miss Rebel and you are watching or looking at this show or listening, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Alabama went out and scored 62 points on you. And your pathetic, loser-ass team couldn't even put up 10 points even with a whole half of garbage time so that we can get the over to hit. I'm telling you right now, that was one of the worst performances I've ever seen. It was 49-7 to at the half. And your sorry, crappy football team even playing against second, third, and fourth stringers at Alabama could not even get a field goal in the second half. Do you know how bad that is? You cost us all money because you couldn't even score uh, 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 three points. I'm not even asking you to keep it within 50. I'm just asking you to keep it within 52. And your sorry asses couldn't do it for a second straight year. And you scored seven points on the first play of the game and the remainder of the 59-45 on the clock, you couldn't get any points. All of you should be ashamed of yourselves for costing the good people of OutKick money for stinking so bad at your offensive effort. And even on the defensive side of the ball, how do you not strip sack somebody from Alabama? How do you not pick off Alabama's fourth string quarterback? How do you not make one of Alabama's fifth string receivers fumble? How do you not manage to do anything for the remaining 59 minutes and 45 seconds? Somebody just said, even by accident. How is it not possible for you to make one small play on either offense or defense for the remaining 59-45 of the game? Makes me sick. Mizzou. This one's for an official. All right, I rarely come out and call officials out, but I got to do it here. Mizzou is up 27-10. Purdue goes down and scores 27-17. Mizzou is coming back the other way. One of the most egregious pass interference calls I have ever seen is blown. Mizzou then lines up for a field goal, gets it blocked. Game goes in 27-24. If that pass interference flag is thrown, Mizzou is up 17 at the half, and that quarterback for Purdue, who threw for 4 billion yards, doesn't even have a chance to bring his team back. That was one of the craziest, worst beats ever. I had 20 grand on three different parlays reliant on Mizzou covering the six, and the game ended with them taking a knee at the three and kicking a field goal. I felt that one in the gut. Now, I only had about $400 that I'd actually wagered, but I still really felt it in the gut. That was an awful game. And how about the review? The Big Ten announcers not recognizing that the ball literally hit the ground? I had big flat screen television. I was up as close to that television as I could get. It was evident as day that the ball was resting on the ground for that final touchdown catch. How could they not see it? I don't understand. Why is my television better than theirs? I don't understand how that's possible. I just got to tell you, I don't get it. Total mess. Total mess completely. Um, all right, what else do I have to talk about? Uh, have I talked about everything I told you that I was going to talk about? Kavanaugh. All right, here's my position in general. We as a society cannot allow people to accuse other people of sexual assault shenanigans 35 years after they happen when the alleged perpetrators are 17 and 15 years old, right? I'm going to go in on this story tomorrow. This is uh, the, the absolute, to me, end of the Me Too era, all right? Here's a tip I want to give everybody out there right now, all right? Here is a tip I want to give everybody out there. If you have ever been a high school boy, okay, if at any time you have ever been in high school and male, you have been in a situation where you were awkward, 
where you were stupid and where you behaved like an idiot. All right? Oftentimes, those situations correspond with your interest in a girl. All right? Here is my tip. I know some young guys listen to this. If you have a son, share it with them. I had to learn this myself. When I was like 16, I tried to kiss a girl. Uh, her name was, uh, what was her name? Katie. Katie. Uh, who was a year younger than me. I think I was a sophomore. She was a, uh, maybe I was a junior. She was a sophomore. I went in for a kiss and she dodged my kiss. If you have ever in your life tried to kiss a girl for the first time, attempting to kiss a girl for the first time is like nucle nuclear fission for a high school uh, teenage boy. All right? You are terrified. You have no idea how to make it happen. Everything surrounding it is like the, Mac, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Manhattan Project. Everybody out there has had a situation where they went in and tried to kiss a girl and it failed. Here is what I learned after that failure. Okay? After the old whiff, after the old kiss into the hair. If you haven't ever kissed a girl in the hair, you haven't lived. All right? I'm telling you right now, if you have never, it's unfortunate you're too good looking. All right? You are too good looking and you are dealing with hot guy privilege. If you have never gone in to kiss a girl and gotten a head turn and gotten a mouth full of hair, then you have not lived. All right? You haven't lived. I'm telling you right now. Every guy, I believe, at some point in his life, it's important to keep you from being too cocky. You go in for the kiss and you get the mouth full of hair. You get the head swerve. You get the dodge. When that happened, I was like, my God, this is embarrassing. What should I do? What should I do after you get the hair? After you get the hair side at the head. I'm like a mad scientist, right? So at 16, I go back and I'm thinking over this whole interaction. I'm like, how could I have avoided that reaction? That reaction? And I came up with a foolproof method that never failed me and I'm convinced will never fail another man. All right, listen to me closely. Go to hold a girl's hand before you kiss her. If a girl will hold your hand, then she will kiss you. Feel foolproof. If she rejects your hand, no big deal. Nobody notices the rejected hand. You're walking to a new bar. You've never kissed the girl before. You're out at the, at the state fair. You're going to a high school football game. If a girl will hold your hand in public, then she will kiss you. I swear to God, it is undefeated. And, and, if you get rejected on the handhold, nobody notices. You're like, okay, I don't need to go in for the kiss now. If she will hold your hand in public, she will kiss you. And if you get rejected on the handhold, it's a clear sign she doesn't want to kiss you. This will change everything. I wish, I wish, when I was 14... I wish there had been a 39-year-old Clay Travis to give me this tip. I am, this is what wisdom and age does. It allows you to impart knowledge to the younger generation. Young boys out there. If, he will hold, if, if she will hold your hand, she'll kiss you. Now, girls, if you want to send a message to a boy to kiss you, and you are nervous about whether he might want to kiss you, if you grab his hand, you will be sending the message to him, I want him to kiss me. This is the greatest, I think, communication device I can possibly give. My boys are going to be so much more advantaged than I was when they get to be 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And you're sitting around out there trying to figure out, how do I know if this girl wants to kiss me? The point of all of this story is, high school is freighted with awkwardness. And I'm going to dive into the Kavanaugh story tomorrow. But I do not think it is appropriate to go look at 35-year-old stories and try to diagnose them now in 2018 off of what happened at a house party in 1984. I don't know. I, and the, by the way, Kavanaugh has denied it. But I'm going to go through this entire story. I'm going to break it down for you. But right now, my gift to all of you, if you have younger brothers, if you have sons, I want you to play this advice for them. I try to make the world a better place. My advice for you, the Travis handhold method is undefeated in determining 
whether or not a girl wants to kiss you, and it is infinitely less awkward if the answer is no. Okay? I try to make the world a better place. New Yorker has my uh, first review of the book out. New Yorker, I'm told it's a really big deal for the New Yorker to review any kind of sports book in any way. Not that bad of a review. I pinned it to the top of my profile. You can go search it out. Republicans Buy Sneakers 2 will be out in eight days. Um, and I will be rolling with the new book. I'll be up in New York City all next week for the release of the book. I appreciate all of you. Share my knowledge. Tomorrow I will do a full breakdown of the Kavanaugh story as it uh, is now going on. We had a lot of NFL and college football to get to. want to say this, by the way. Vontae Davis, peace out at halftime. One of the most unbelievable sports stories I have ever seen. For Vontae Davis at halftime of a football game to peace out is something I have never, ever seen in my life as a sports fan. To decide to retire at halftime of a game is so Buffalo Bills, it hurts. I don't even know what I would think if I were on this team. A part of me wants that to be how my radio career ends. After I've been doing radio early in the morning for so long, one day I just finally get tired of it. And right about halftime of the show, an hour and a half in, I'm like, guys, I'm retiring. Peace out. I'll see you. 7.30 a.m. I'm gone. And then everybody else just has to fill in the next hour and a half of the show. I wouldn't do it because I'm actually a good teammate and I would feel bad for everybody else left to have to fill the show. But a part of me thinks, my God, what an unbelievable way to go out just to step out halfway through the show and never return I'd like to retire sometimes from my own show early in the morning at 6.30. And so a part of me thinks, God bless you, Vontae Davis, for giving everybody a lot to talk about. I just wish you'd done it on Monday Night Football or Thursday Night Football and we didn't have as many other uh, stories to chase. Uh, I love all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been OutKick the Show. Be back tomorrow. Uh, lock it in. We'll be live at uh, at 4.30 Eastern. Todd Furman had an unbelievable gambling week. He literally won every bet that he gave out all of last week. I'd like to say that he did shitty and that he did crappy and that I made fun of him a lot. But no, he actually won. If Mizzou had covered, I would have won, by the way. I'm Clay Travis. This is OutKick the Show. Tomorrow, more on Kavanaugh. In the meantime, the Travis hand-holding method. If you're a young man... It's undefeated, I'm telling you right now. DBAP, but if you're trying to decide whether or not a girl wants to kiss you, SBAP, handhold. I'll see you.